Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. You guys are welcome to join us in standing. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. For unto us a child is born. Thank you, Father. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. This is victory, amen. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. He shall be called. And he shall be called a wonderful, a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, the everlasting, the everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, mighty God, you will sit. And it there shall be no end to the increase of his rule, to the increase of his government and peace. And there be no upholding righteousness, our God shall accomplish this. He shall be called. He shall be called a wonderful, a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, the everlasting, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, a mighty God. They shall be. There shall be no end to the increase of his rule, to the increase of his government and peace. For he will sit on David's throne, upholding righteousness. Our God, our God shall accomplish this. And he shall be called a wonderful, a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, the everlasting, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, a mighty God. Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, the mighty God, mighty God, yes, you are. Mighty God, you are Mighty God, you are everlasting to everlasting Mighty God, mighty God Mighty God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And oh, God, you are so good. to us. God, you're so 
This is running out. It's running out. This is truth this morning. Your goodness is running out. Your goodness is right. 
It's running out. It's running out. Till me. Over and over. Oh goodness, it's running out. It's running out. Till me. Oh, your goodness. Your goodness keeps running out. It's running out. Till me. Oh, yes, you are. Father, you've been faithful. So much you have been faithful. Thank you, Jesus. So my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am Your glory, Lord, for your glory. 
Jesus. 
Your name is like honey. It's on my lips. Your spirit like oil to my skin. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. Love you. Your name is like honey. sent your son as an offering for us, as a sacrifice for us. What a friend, what a brother, what a king. Be highly exalted in this place, O oh God. We are humbled by your presence. We are humbled by you, O oh God. So thank you for this day of celebration of victory. Thank you that you are still in control. That your goodness is still running after us. That there is no doubt, Father, that you are still seated on the throne. That you are still sovereign over us. That there's still living waters flowing from worship. That there's still healing flowing, O oh God. We give you all the glory. Good morning, good morning. Um, just want to let the Holy Spirit bless you this festive season. And may His Spirit be with you. And in this time where I was seeking the Lord to, to say something this morning, he, he brought me to a strange place in the Word where His family went from Jerusalem back to Galilee. I know, but Galilee is. Yes. And, um, no, back to Nazareth. And Jesus stayed behind. 
His parents left, and they thought he was with them. For three days they journeyed, and Jesus was back in the temple, in his father's house. He told his parents, why are you upset? You should know I'm in my father's house. And from there, he, he jumped forward in the word, and then he came to his father's house later on when he was uh, in his ministry towards the end. And he walked in, and he threw all the tables over and the money exchanges. And I was thinking, Lord, uh, you, you show me we must come to your house, and then we must throw the money exchanges. And he, he said, that's not where you're supposed to be at. You're supposed to be at the next part where in Acts they gave. So we, we're supposed to be giving, right? And in this festive season, it's a season to be giving. And our, what we were shopping with Cooper, and he says, no, I want this, I want this, it's my toy. And we said, wait, it's not you first. Give to others first. And that's an axe that shows us that the, the church gave above and beyond for the church, for the members of the church. And in this, God showed me that it's not about some, you, you'll see these, some big mega churches are talking about, no, you need to give and you'll be blessed. It's not about that. God's showing us it's the heart. It's the giving in the heart. It's changing from seeking him first and knowing that if you seek him, he has changed your heart so that you will look after somebody else above yourself. And that's one of the first commandments he gave that overshadows all the commandments, that if you follow those two, seek ye the Lord with all your heart and love your brother as you love yourself. With those two, you fulfill all the commandments that he has given. And in this, I have a, a testimony of throne room that we, we as the, the, the leaders, we, we've been giving and giving. And we have started seeing the church giving. And it's come to a point where we were able the past month to actually bless somebody that was in need from your giving. So I want to encourage you to, it's, it's not about us, it's not about the church, it's about God. It's about his love that he has given to you to love one another. And I just wanted to bless you with that. And there's different ways that we can give. It's not only in financial. It's in loving somebody else's child as you love your own. It's about seeking, making sure somebody has something to eat. It's about seeing somebody needs a lift to come to church and picking them up. And so I want you to just seek ye first God and let him change your heart to, to and change your ears so that you can hear what he wants you to do. So you, you, you can give to the church in different ways. We have the box. We have our banking details. It should be up on live stream. <laughs> Somewhere up right there. <laughs> and um, we also, you can also go to www.throneroom.co.za and you can also do a donation there. But don't limit yourself just to that. Be flexible to the Holy Spirit. And that, and that what everybody says, that bless somebody and you'll be blessed. But seek ye first, your favorite verse, my love, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. So I just wanted to bless you with that, and have a merry, merry holiday. Can you hear me? Oh, there you do.
the, the thousands that are with us. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this morning. Thank you that you are moving by your Spirit. And that there is no one like you, Father. Thank you that you came this day to be with us and to share with us and to, to show your faithfulness once more. What we sang this morning is so evident, so true. All our lives you've been faithful. You've never left us. You've never forsaken us. It may have felt like you left us, but you've never left us, Father. And even at this day, Father, I pray that you'll be close to us. Let us allow us to be aware of your presence this morning. I pray for eyes to be opened, spirits to be opened now in the name of Jesus, and hearts to be soft to receive what you are giving this morning. So thank you, Father, for this day, for the celebration that the King came. You dwelt among his people, that you are Emmanuel, Father, that you are dwelling with us right now, that you are with us now. Thank you for your presence, Jesus. Amen. Amen. How are you guys this morning? Good to see you. What did you say, Emma? How did you say? <laughs> Feliz Navidad. Amen. So this morning you actually touched from on, on one of the themes of our, of our message this morning of Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things will be added unto you. Now you may ask me, Nathaniel, where does that fit <laughs> into the, the Christmas message? That little baby boy was born in a manger, in a stinking um, barn to save a nation. Where does that come in? Seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom. Amen. The Lord revealed to me this morning a new take on our Merry Christmas message. But firstly, you know, you're talking about shopping now, Brom, so we also have been shopping, disastrously shopping. <laughs> My poor wife was almost in tears in the store, in the shopping centers. We went into one store, we had our basket full of, of everything she needed, got to the till and realized she, I haven't got my wallet on me and she's not got her wallet on her. <laughs> and the, the, the pressure is building. The pressure is building because it's getting fuller and the lines are getting longer and she's embarrassed. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever stood at the, at the pay point and said, declined, <laughs> there's no funds available? <laughs> Well, it was as bad as that, right? So I'm running off to the car to try and see if I've got my wallet. My wallet was nowhere to be found, so I said to my wife, Eleanor, just slip out of the store quietly. <laughs> try and get no one to notice you. <laughs> anyway, when I, she got out of the store, she had daggers staring at me. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. <laughs> Amen. But walking, coming to my story, walking down the mall, and uh, driving down the beachfront and driving as traffic is building. In fact, when we, we've stopped at the shopping center, you could already sense the tension in the atmosphere. People were tense. People were angry. People were upset. I mean, I saw so many road rage cases in this last day or two. I couldn't believe it. And I said to Elma, I said to her, you know, can people not just take a step back, relax? In fact, the mall was not even that busy. It was quiet, but people were acting as though the place was jam-packed because of the spirits that were so in turmoil and so anxious to get what they needed. And I realized something. I thought, this time of the year, at Christmas time, we sometimes think it's a happy time for everybody. It's a fantastic family time. It's, we're going to have parties. We're going to have cakes. We're going to have celebrations. But for many out there, this is probably the worst time of the year that there could be. There's loneliness out there. There's... There's brokenheartedness, people losing loved ones, especially in a year like we've had with COVID-19. Many people have lost loved ones and families have been torn apart in this year. So you come to Christmas time and you think to yourself, you know, I don't want, I want this day to pass me by. I don't want this day because it's not a good day for me. I miss my loved ones. I must miss my family. And I'm so aware that God is near. He's close to the brokenhearted. Amen. He's near to those who are crushed in spirit. And at this time of year, where there are those who are not maybe as jolly as what we are, maybe they are completely broken out, we just want to say, Father, I pray right now that you will be close to them in the name of Jesus, that you will be the comforter right now in Jesus' name, 
that you will come and mend the broken heart, that you will come and fill the void, oh God, in Jesus' name. So take time, as Brom said uh, this morning, um, if, you have, if you know of somebody who hasn't got a meal, somebody who's not got a home at this time of year, invite them to your house. Don't be exclusive, be inclusive this time of year. Amen. Invite those who need a place to eat. Seek first the kingdom of God. So, we find ourselves in, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 7. I will not be long, I just want to drop this in your spirit. Isaiah 7, 14. So this word from Isaiah, right, I want you to see this picture. I'm talking about a master plan. A master plan, you know, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. All right, that, that was a master plan. Do you agree with me? Yeah. That was a master plan that the Heavenly Father said, the triune God said, somebody's got to go to save this this people, and bring them back to us. And the son saying, God, or the father saying, I'm sending you, my son, to be a perfect sacrifice. Now that word right there already says a lot. A sacrifice means pain, means suffering. Somebody's going to get hurt in a sacrifice. You may be sacrificing some of your money. You may be sacrificing some of your lamb this afternoon. Huh? <laughs> Santel. But the sacrifice always involves something being either lost or some form of pain involved. It costs you something, a sacrifice. So God said, I'm sending my son to be a sacrifice for this people, a master plan. But 700 years before this, we find Isaiah. Hallelujah. Praise God. 700 years in verse 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. This is 700 years, approximately, before the birth of Jesus. Now, we, we're not psychic, we're not foretellers, but God had a master plan before the foundation of the earth. The word says that the lamb was slain. So Isaiah prophesies that a, ve- a, a, a baby will come, a young one will come, and you will call him Emmanuel. Fast forward with me, 700 years. Turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 1. Did everybody catch that? Do I need to sing Jingle Bells this morning? <laughs> Thank you, Eleanor. <Arnold. laughs> Crashing through the snow in an in open sleigh. What does it say? So, okay, so we're talking about a master plan this morning. And one of the speakers is, is screaming at me. Uh, so we, we're moving from the prophecy of Jesus coming to the event taking place right now. Okay, are you with me? Okay? God is a God that knows the end and the beginning. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. That's why we know there's a plan and a purpose for your life. Amen. So if we find the story about, this morning we're talking about Mary and Joseph. All right? So I will be Joseph, and the ladies can be Mary this morning. Or we can vice versa, okay? Brom, it's okay. Metro style. So the word says, if you look at the book of Luke, Luke writes a story from Mary's perspective. Matthew writes the story from Joseph's perspective. Okay, so if you ever want to have a different perspective on things, go and read it like that. All right, so we're going to look at the view from Mary's side first, the woman. And we spoke now about roles. I'm talking about what is your role in the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom, what is your role in the kingdom? Read with me in verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the town of Galilee, to a virgin, we just heard about this, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. So there's already an obstacle. She was pledged, she was engaged to be married. All right? A descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. Can you stick up your hand if you're highly favored this morning? You are highly favored. Amen. The angel said to her, Greetings to you. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Praise God. And Mary was greatly troubled at the words and wondered what kind of greeting this would be. Now, if I say to you, highly favored, you can know it's a good greeting. Amen. Highly favored. What kind of greetings could this be? 
But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor. Can I stop there? This day we have found favor. Hallelujah. Because Jesus came, we found favor. It doesn't matter what the world says at you tomorrow. It doesn't matter what happens out there in road rage cases this morning or this afternoon. We plead the blood of the Lamb over you. You have found favor. End of story. Close the books. End of sermon. Because Jesus came, you have found favor. That means doors will be open to you which should not be open to you. That means strongholds will come tumbling down when you move by His Spirit. Because you have found favor favor. The problem we have, and here I go again off my message, the problem we have is we don't believe we are favored. Hallelujah. We don't believe we're favored. If you know you are a champion, you know I was a rugby player back in my high school days and a little bit after that. If you know who you are, you don't walk onto the rugby pitch out of the the change room like (laughs) looking to see if the opponents are going to see me hiding from place to place as a, as a mouse. I like to call people, sometimes you see the guys, I say, man of a shame, mice. Huh? Now a mouse comes out of the corners. And, but if you are a champion, come on now, me. If you are a champion, you step out onto that field, my friend. I am the Lion of Judah. I know who I am. I'm jumping around on the rugby pitch. I'm looking at my opponent right in his eyes. You're going to know who I am today, my friend. That was me on the rugby field many years ago. (laughs) Scolio, (laughs) bro. Amen. Walking like a champion onto the rugby field because I knew who I was. I knew the skills that God had blessed me with. Now, in the same way, because Jesus came, if I could walk like a squally onto the rugby field, huh, young, <laughs> knowing who I am, how much more can you go out into that world saying, because he died, because he came and rose again, I walk as more than a conqueror. Hmm? How did, is somebody blessed this morning? Is somebody blessed? Change the way. You know, me and Nehemiah, <laughs> my son Nehemiah, is a beautiful young man. But every now and again, I catch him when he's walking like this. I said, hey, boot! <laughs> Lift up your head. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift up your head. You better know who you are when you go into that world. Pull back your shoulders. Lift your head. Walk as though you are a somebody. Don't you come walking like a loser in my house. You are a champion. Hallelujah. I ask my wife. I do it all the time. And they get so frustrated with me. you got to give some identity to our young ones, to our children. We're talking about Jesus being born a champion. Even before he even had an identity on earth, he came born a champion. And the same identity he says, I give to you freely. Where was I? You have found favor. If you forget everything I've said this morning, you have found favor this morning. You have found favor. So Mary, you found favor. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You are called, you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Now, to those of you who are still fearful about COVID 19 and all the pandemics going around the world, the word says to me, His kingdom will never end. Amen. His kingdom will never, never end. Mary says, now, this is where our, our story comes in. Mary says, how will this be, Mary asked, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so that the Holy One will be born and called the Son of God. Turn with me to verse 37. The word says, for no word from God will ever fail. No word from God. If Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, So is my words that go forth from my mouth. They will not return void to me, but it will accomplish everything. So when God has spoken a word over you, it will accomplish its target. You've got to believe that. And I hear the crux comes for Mary. 
So let's put perspective here. Mary is a virgin due to be married to Brahm. Right, I'm Mary, Brahm is Brahm, Joseph. <laughs> the problem I'm sitting with here, God, to accept the word that you're giving me. The problem I have, it's fine that you are about to send the Son, the Most High God, into this world. The problem is that I am the vessel. The problem is that I am the channel. If I accept what you are saying to me now, angel, I should be put to death. I'm talking about a sacrifice. I'm talking about playing your part for the kingdom. Because in natural senses, if I had slept with anybody prior to my, my marriage to Brahm, I was in adultery. And we know the story about the woman who was caught in adultery. They tried to stone her and kill her. So by accepting the call, I'm talking about the call this morning, accepting the call of the kingdom, I would say I am or I'm prepared to go to death for what you are about to put inside of me. Come on now. Did you catch that? I'm about to go all the way, even at the cost of death, for what you are about to deposit inside my life, God. Come on now. Come on now. You see, that's why you walk out into the street, that's why you walk out into your business, that's why you walk out into your workplace and they don't like you. And you try to ask yourself, what am I doing? Wow, I'm doing nothing wrong. I am, I am just being Nathaniel. And they despise me sometimes. It's because of what is inside of you. To the point of death, Mary, to make a decision, are you prepared to take the cost of death for the kingdom's sake? Seek ye first the kingdom, Mary. Are you going to seek the kingdom first now? When it's going to cost you death? And the word says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. You see, she accepted the call of the kingdom. Praise God. If more sons and daughters can accept the call of the kingdom, the kingdom will advance at a rapid pace. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. So there was a deposit in Mary's life of glory. Amen. And this morning we speak a deposit of glory over your life. But the deposit was going to cost her seeking the kingdom at all costs first. Fast forward. So we've got Mary's story. Let's hear what old uh, Joseph. Let's see what Joseph says in Matthew chapter 1. Verse 18. So, yeah, let's, you know, they always say there's two sides to the story. So, the one side is that Mary was this beautiful virgin, beautiful, he accepted the call, honorable. She's going to the point of death if it costs her that much. She, there was a price to be paid for this battle. But now let's hear what Dad says. So, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. Verse 18. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant by the Holy Spirit. I speak pregnancy over you by the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Do you receive that? Do you receive that? Eleanor, are you ready to be pregnant by the Holy Spirit? The Word says she was found pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Now, for those of you who can perceive what I'm saying, you will, you will have a great blessing. Verse 19, because Joseph's husband was faithful to the law, you see here the, the problem comes into play. He was faithful to the law, so he should have her killed if we stopped right there, in a nutshell. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? If I'm engaged to Eleanor, <laughs> we are betrothed to be married, I'm excited, all right? <laughs> and Eleanor comes to me, how dare you? <laughs> And says to me, Nathaniel, sorry, my brother. I am pregnant. Shoo. She did that lion. That same guy who walked out here like a champion. He's coming out here with knives. Vasai, where is he? Where is that man? Let's slaughter him, Brahm. Holy fire will come over you if your engaged wife, the one you love so dearly, says to you, oops, <laughs> oopsie, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'm sure 
The story doesn't tell us this. The story tells us the beautiful side of Joseph, but I'm telling you in the natural, there must have been flames or fire in that household. So, so, so wait quickly. <laughs> Let's go back. Eleanor, you had an oopsie. Explain to me, <laughs> after I've calmed down, how did that oopsie take place? <laughs> <laughs> Please explain to me, how did that take place, my dear? <laughs> now she comes with a story. No, my husband. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't talk nonsense to me. I don't want to hear nothing about the Holy Spirit right now. I'm angry. I'm infuriated. Don't speak to God about me. Man, sometimes I think we are so holy. <laughs> There's times when you've got to repent and say, Father, forgive me for my road rage. And in that moment, I believe, Joseph, when Joseph heard the words, the Holy Spirit came upon me. I'm telling you, he must have used some strong language. I don't believe you. It's impossible. That's what I'm thinking. This is impossible. Don't bring God into a situation where you messed up, Mary. Now you're telling me your God did it. You messed up. I'm embarrassed. You are embarrassed. We've got a serious problem right now because you are going to go to the gallows, Opiel. You are going to be killed right now. And I love you, but you messed up, Mary. That is where Joseph is coming from. Read between the lines sometimes in the Scriptures. Amen. So he was faithful to the law. But yet, he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. Bless this man's heart. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. So he needed to get rid of this woman somehow, isn't it? He needed to get rid of the shame. He doesn't want to hurt her feelings too much or her image too much. So he's got to find a, a diplomatic way to, to solve this problem. The easiest way right now is to divorce Mary because she messed up in his anger. But after he considered this, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid, but take Mary home to be your wife. This angel must be kidding, right? Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. We're, gonna, we're about to see some Holy Spirit moves in this church. Amen. What is conceived in you is from the Holy Spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say that to him, please. What is conceived in you is from the Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm. Remember the story we read last, uh, last week? It was about the Samaritan woman where, the, where Jesus said, the hour has come and now is where true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. What is conceived inside of you is from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. From the Holy Spirit, verse 21, and she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. You see? So Mary has accepted the call, but it takes two to, get to tango here for the kingdom's sake. So now Joseph gets the message from the angel and says, Joseph, if you know the order of the day, after the eighth day of circumcision, where Jesus would be circumcised, after the eighth day, it was Joseph's duty to name the son. He needed to say, I accept the call. It was okay that Mary said yes. Mary would bear the child. Mary would, would nurture the child. But as soon as that child came into the world, it was daddy's duty to give him the name above all names. Wow! It was necessary for Joseph to step into the same boat of death as his wife Mary. Come on now, Elna, come stand here with me. Come stand here with me. Hallelujah. It was necessary not for Eleanor to stand there by herself and, and me stand here on the glory boat to Alibama land and say to her, you messed up, lady. You sit in that boat of death. I'm going to try as best I can to divorce you quietly. But the people are not stupid. There's something inside of you that's growing. Hallelujah. It was necessary for Joseph to say, you see my wife? I accept the call. And though you may look like you are in sin, I will walk this road with you. And together, we will usher in the Savior of the world. Come on now. What a God. What a God. Amen. Amen. 
Love you. Sorry if some of you stumbled on that little kiss. You do. I think you got all gone. That's that's what I'm saying about getting in the same boat. Joseph had to get into the same boat as that, I think. Oh, are you you are you what you're saying? Because he made it look as though it was his child. I think he was involved with that as well, yeah. Amen. Yeah, oh yes. Sometimes the men get off easy. But Joseph had to make the call. Joseph had to make the call to stand by this lady. And the word says, you are to give him this name, Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. In fact, if you think, Kelly, if you think about what, what would happen in, in a modern world scenario, right? We, we say that jo, the other scenario is that they got married and they didn't, nobody knew. It may have been a child, but if I'm a man, I've got some buddies, Right? we sitting at the pub or wherever else, and, st- and I say to Brahm and all the guys say, yes, you will not believe what that Eleanor did. You will not believe. We are about to get married in a month's time, or six months' time, whatever it must be, and she went and got pregnant. Can I tell you what happened to that story with those brothers of mine? <laughs> Wildfire! <laughs> did you hear... So I think there's no doubt that he faced some of this corner as well. Um, he took, and all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive, just like we read in Isaiah 7 verse 14, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, God with us. What a word. When Joseph woke up, he accepted the call of the kingdom. He did what the angel of the Lord commanded him to do. And he took Mary home to be his wife. But they did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. Amen. This morning, as we stand on Christmas morning, where a Savior came, and let me say this in my uh, closing of this message is, we know that Jesus was not born this day. Amen. In all natural senses, either you go by the wise men who was watching the Christmas star, the astrologers, and they followed the star, and they, they date the date back, I think, to, to Je- Ju- is it, um, June 17th. They, they pinpointed because that's where the star appeared, and they go over where Jesus was born. Or you go by the shepherd boys who were in the field, and they would be in the field in summertime and wintertime starts around October, November, December in Palestine. So the point of the matter is, even though he was not exactly born on this day, to me and my house, to us as believers, it represents the day that a king came. Whether it was today, tomorrow, yesterday, or the, the same thing applies for the Sabbath, if I'm going on a thin line right now. Ooh, feel that. <laughs> now I'm on a thin line. Now we're talking about the Sabbath day. For me, the Sabbath day is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We are at church this morning to worship the King of Kings. We will be here tomorrow night to worship the King of Kings. I sit in my room on a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday praying and worshiping the King of Kings. I don't need a timeline to dictate when the King of Glory came because I know He did. Hallelujah. And He came to give us something that is unshakable, something that is unchanging, something that says to you, you are victorious even though you don't feel like it right now. Amen. To the victor, He will give the crown of victory. Turn with me to Isaiah 6, 9. Let me close with this. This is the prophecy. 9 verse 6. My apologies. The word says, we sang this this morning, 
For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. It will not be upon the shoulders of several Ramaphosa. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. <laughs> the government will be on the King of Glory's shoulders. It is on his shoulders. He is sovereign over us. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Verse 7. Now, if you're feeling right at the moment, this is for you. If you're feeling unstable at the moment, if you're feeling uncertain at the moment about your future, if you don't know what God is about to do next year, you know, I, 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 we're so aware that there are challenges in the world. We've already heard about 2022 uh, will have seven or eight variants of Omicron. doesn't matter what happens to COVID-19 next year. This is what the Word says. Of the greatness of His government and peace, there will be no end. That is what we cling to. That is what we trust in. Amen. There will be no end to His kingdom. He will reign on David's throne and over His kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. Today is a representation of heaven coming down to earth and God dwelling amongst His people, an eternal kingdom that is among us. All you need to do right now, and this is where my mandate goes out to you this morning, is seek first the kingdom. Let this day be a reminder to you to seek first the kingdom. You know, we used to have that little wristband that said, what would Jesus do? You remember that? Let it be a mental note for you to say, what would I do for the kingdom? I'm choosing the kingdom first this day. Christmas is the time for us to choose first and seek first the kingdom. Amen. Brom, can you get my guitar lined up? Amen. Amen. We are going to serve some communion. I'm going to pray for the table and then Eleanor and Wilmy will distribute it to you. Amen. Father, we thank you that you came, that you rule and that you reign, that your kingdom and your government, Father, has no end. And just like a Joseph and a Mary who accepted the call to seek the kingdom first, this day, Father, we bless the table of the Lord and say we choose to seek your kingdom first once more, O oh God. Be exalted, be lifted up. And we want to say we love you, Jesus, with all of our hearts. Thank you, Father, for this morning. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, bro. Amen. 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 As you...
your blood There's no greater love Than your blood thank you for this morning thank you that you came and being Emmanuel Father God with us thank you that you went to the cross Father to establish your kingdom that you died and that you rose again for that reason we stand in victory oh God by your blood and by your stripes thank you that you call us heirs to your kingdom nothing can separate that we are more than conquerors through Christ who came and set us free so we bless this Christmas day in the name of Jesus we pray right now God that you will be the center of it all the center of our celebration the center of our thoughts for you are our victory Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Bless you all. We'll be back on uh, Sunday evening at 6 o'clock for some worship, should you be interested. Amen. 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 What do you want to do? Give me one second, okay? So
Yeah. 